What's up everybody? Brett here and I'm back today playing some more of Marcus Wolfhart's Vortex campaign on Total War Warhammer 2's new DLC, The Hunter and the Beast. And let's go ahead and actually, uh, let's end the turn. And I can talk while we're doing that. But guys, I thought our first episode went great. Oh man, we just encountered the Defenders of the Great Plan. So I think what this is, is the Vassal for Nakai. I have not, I've actually not seen this, uh, this faction's icon before. Awesome. So you can see the, the three different gems, the red, green, and blue. I think they're each supposed to signify a Lizardman God. Really cool. Where did we see them? I see Shakwa down here is definitely going to be a clan fester. I don't see the other guys yet, but so here we have issue. We have been issued a mission from Barry Drury to research a technology. The necessary preparations have been made. We could push our current engineering and technological limits further through research. We're already doing that. We're only one turn away from getting the tithe rebates, which should help us quite a bit. Uh, to potentially help stabilize our public order. And here we have an option, guys. Man, they're mustering so many troops right now. Uh, we have an option. We can try and go ahead and fight. This will be a 21 enemy battle. They're being led by a red-crested skink chief. Or we could attempt to do our ambush strategy. So, huh. Siege battle's obviously harder. If we could draw these guys out... They're no longer mustering. You can see they're, uh, they don't have the mustering stance activated. So there's a good chance they're looking to like head out and do something. Marcus, we could Walmart. attempt to ambush them. That would, I mean, we could crush this entire stack and just walk right in to Tlaxlon, which I think is probably the best strategy. So to ambush, we need to have at least 25% of our movement range. Yeah, it's interesting. So this is where campaigns are kind of made, guys. They're either won or lost. If we take this in this turn, awesome, right? We don't we don't waste any turns. You want to snowball in this game as fast as possible. Uh, regardless of whatever we do, though, we want to recruit from our Imperial supplies. And now we're adding a great sword unit, two halberds, and two more huntsmen. So they said that they were going to make it so that you could move around your, your unit cards. Uh, they haven't done that yet, sadly. Marcus Wolfhart. Let's, uh, before we do that either, let's Tools of judgment ready. see how far we can go. So we have to go all the way down here. It's going to take so many turns with our Witch Hunter. I was hoping to maybe meet another group. Let's see what their diplomacy is like right now, yes. playing Fester. Because we don't hate these guys. Skaven. Borg Zap Scruttle is this guy's name. Um, they hate the Lizardmen just as much as we do. And all the Lizardmen that we're going to be killing makes these guys pretty... Pretty decent options for allies. They're also kind of further down south here. Uh, I think what will end up happening is we can maybe make them pay us. This is interesting. No furs even lower. They could give us 600 for a non-aggression pact, which we could cancel later or whatever. Um, but in all in all odds, they're just going to get destroyed with no negative repercussions to us. So I think we're going to do this. Okay, maybe they'll only take 300. I could I could mess or, I could mess around with the uh, the payments all day. I've gotten them to give me 500, not 600 before, you know. But we'll accept that. We're not going to be fighting them anytime soon. And without a doubt, they will end up loving us. But they do have a natural aversion to us. Interesting. My minus 40. Wow. Okay. But for now, they'll be kind of a roadblock to fight our enemies for us. And that's useful. They're also not occupying territory that I'll be occupying for quite some time. So Gorok is down here somewhere. So is Nakai. And... This is a, a territory that we really want. Itza is like just straight up literally a gold mine. So we, we are, are going to try and take best. that. And I think now what we're going to do is we're going to attack this place. I have very little faith really in the AI's ability to launch uh, ambushes. We can end up sitting here for three or four turns until it works. 
which is not something I want to do. So I think we're just going to rush in and start besieging this place. They can always sally out and, and attack us. The enemy city is fortified, my lord. Yeah, Weapon I know all about it. Okay, provinces. so without, without any type of siege attacker trait, like a cannon or something like that, we can't just burst open the gates. This is going to be a tough one, y'all. So let's continue our siege. And before we go, let's go ahead and check out our diplomacy with the New World Colonies. What is your business here? All right, they're a little bit more amenable. Yeah, you'll, the AI will never take a low. It just, it just doesn't happen. It has to be a medium. To the free. But I'm not willing to make that pack yet. They're gonna pay us for it in the future. All right, let's roll again. Now the thing about Mark here is that his ambush success chance is really high, but if the AI just wants to turtle on their one, you know, man, they're gonna they're gonna come out and attack us. So if they want to turtle in their one little spot, they'll do that, and the AI is happy to do that forever. With clout, comrades. Let's quick save this. We've got a ton more archers than we did before. We have a lot of anti-large. Unfortunately, there are no large targets here, and these units are shielded. Lots of shields, so our archers aren't going to be as effective, but if we could hold the line with our halberdiers and our greatswords, and we finally get to see what Let's our boy is made run. of. Good strategy here would definitely be to snipe the skink lord. If we let him, he'll get a lot of kills, uh, but if we snipe him off early, uh, we could potentially have a good route on our hands. Let's see what the battlefield looks like. Love having archers on the Empire roster, not having to worry as much about what lines of sight we're dealing with. And this is kind of unfortunate. The reinforcements here, which I would guess are the, uh, the garrison units, they are pretty far away. So we can't like ambush them. If they were coming from behind us, for instance, we could place our units here and catch them as they entered. So what we can do now, though, is deploy up on top of this hill that'll be a great line of sight for our archers um, but we really want to get on top of them before these other units join them and the AI acts pretty funny in these types of situations so without any further ado let me go ahead you know what let's let's get some halberdiers on the outside this will be our front line great swords in the center and it doesn't really matter how we build it out um, we would love to hold on to these units. We don't want them to die. So we'll use them as a secondary defensive force. We can... Man. So these guys have Vanguard deployment. Let's make use of that. They don't fire in a 360. Let's go group 4 here. We'll deploy them here with Marcus. And he can keep skirmish mode on. That's fine. These other archers are going to want to stay close to our actual infantry line. We're going to use our new paladin to hold the line. He actually has comes with guardian. That's awesome. Just like standard paladins. And he's got the other trickster shard for whenever we uh, finally get some magic on this team. Awesome. Another anti-large specialist. Go ahead and take a look at him. Yeah, he looks really cool. I mean, just kind of a standard paladin. Love the effect on his sword. Really cool. Okay. And then, of course, we have our war wagons, which we will use quite a bit. We actually might want to deploy them a little bit further down. Okay. We are good to go, guys. So the idea here for me right now is to rush to this very defensible cliff location and to see what the AI does. So pretty much nothing is as important as us just moving forward. Let's get our archers up here and firing. Marcus, we might want to just keep down here. Let's get our other archers up here. They have really low range. This group here will protect our back line. And in a second here, we're going to start more accurately defending ourselves. They have skink skirmishers. We need to be aware of that. I don't know. Let's just shoot into the blob with Marcus. And these Sora Spears have to go. 
But if I can, I want to get, I want to take this position. Let's see if we can get over here before we get wrecked. We'll keep the great swords a bit in reserve. Yeah, we're gonna get poison. That's a little rough. Just gotta keep these war wagons moving. I don't care if they shoot at Marcus. And we're just using him right now. He's shooting into skinks. Our halberdiers are taking a little bit of work. But these aren't the special chameleon skinks. These are standard skink skirmishers. They have no missile resistance. So they should actually... The war wagons should be great. They're high armor. And I was hoping we'd be tearing these guys up by now. I don't know really what's messing them up. I don't think I gave them any contradictory orders. Let's uh, let's get those guys there. The halberds can be blocking them off. And yeah, a little sloppy, but not too bad. Perfect. Did we leave skirmish mode on our archers? I think that's what the problem is. They got too close, and it messed us up. So talking while talking while playing, something I really have to get used to. Let's bring these spears up and around. These guys can come over here. Yeah, that was really messing us up. Wow. And great swords can go there. So yeah, not my finest movements. It certainly did not mean to leave my uh, skirmish mode up. And they're not coming around this way. And my halberds were able to break them off. So let's attack there, bring these halberds back around. We'll use these spearmen to break them off. Let's actually put them in the guard mode. These are like some weird rookie mistakes I don't normally make. We're doing all right. They've caught our war wagons somehow. How are they catching them with skirmish mode on? I don't know. But now we just have to run them away. Take off skirmish mode. I, whenever I play like myself, I don't ever use it. I'm not sure why I'm using it now. And they, we've got them in a huge blob, but we have no means of taking advantage of it. And I don't know why our units aren't firing. Very weird. Let's put them in hot groups and just get them to fire. We'll get tons of incidental fire here. We'll hit units that we don't even really mean to hit. And Marcus should just be, like, wrecking these guys right now. We want him to just shoot in the middle of the blob. Come on, wagons. Gotta get out of there, guys. Are they shattered? They're just broken still. Let's see if we can get these extra swordsmen kind of in this little niche here. Providing a little more DPS. Our paladin is in the midst of everything. Look at all this blue. Get in there, guys. And our great swords are killing the red-crested skink. He's not really made to fight that. Oh, those are Soros warriors. Let's kind of avoid that fight. We don't have to take it. Back it up. And we definitely don't want to take that fight with some injured swordsmen. We want them to engage. And then we'll move in. And if we have to pull these halberdiers out and put in some pressure ones, that's what we're going to do. So interesting that the AI funneled the heck out of itself. With any type of magic, this battle would already be over. And our war wagons are still getting wrecked. Let's see how the AI behaves. Because I wasn't watching them earlier. I wasn't babysitting them. And sure, that's definitely my mistake. But like, I thought for sure they'd be able to get away. Their speed is 36. Okay. Skink cohorts are actually 47. I'm just constantly underestimating their speed. We just can't let ourselves get poisoned. And we've used all of our ammo, so there's no point in kiting anymore. Let's just bring the spearmen over here in case some of these rallying units try and get behind us. Wasn't really meaning to take advantage of the AI's desire to blob up, but certainly what we did. Kind of funneled them nicely here. You know what? Go over here and chase off these skink cohorts. 
and you just stay in the pocket. We can, uh, let's see if we can land one of these aim shots in the midst of all these enemies. Yeah, from what I've seen, he basically just runs forward. I can't stand that. You have to really be shooting at a large target that's out in the open. He's up to 126 kills. That's pretty impressive. Keep our archers firing. Come on, guys. War wagons. Let's go. Let's go. We've only lost one model. This is pretty sloppy, though, for my part. Let's, uh... Get them out of there. They'll regen. They're tanky. I think half of their value is, is kind of just in their ability to absorb damage for you. After they've shot their payload. The you know what? Let's shoot into the backs of these guys. The we haven't been individually assigning targets because we've just kind of been killing everything. You know what? Let's actually focus a bit more on these skirmishers. They could be very annoying for us to, to clean up. Oh god. And they routed our war wagons and we lost a few more. Man, I really, really underestimated how fast they are. Skinks are 46 speed. That's crazy. And then, of course, when they get close, they get a kind of acceleration speed. And here we go. So this is the point where we just we have to chase things down. So we'll lock formations and get everyone to start chasing. Take off guard mode. That way we'll chase. I don't think we're close enough, honestly, to, to really get anything. What we don't want to do is kill that skink chief. Because then they'll just spawn another. We still have to wait one more turn before we can... Uh, before we can get into the city. Even though they sallied out and attacked us. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, the war wagons aren't going to be useful for us in the siege to come anyway. How did our boy, uh, Roderick do? 40 kills? Probably all skinks. Let's fast forward here. Really just trying to get a couple extra kills. It'll be less dinos to, uh, to face whenever we finally crack open the city. And the Saurus Warriors are much more manageable speed of 31. Man, maybe I need to play some more Lizardmen. That speed is crazy. They're like they're as fast as like monstrous units. So Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna underestimate that again. Poison plus their movement speed. Pretty deadly combo. And, you know, we lost a little bit there. And I'm kicking myself over my poor war wagon implementation. Uh they're a new unit and something I still have to get used to. But all in all, our forces are completely intact. Our archers are fine. You know, our halberdiers, great swords. We didn't lose any units in that exchange. The Emperor grants this pardon. And do Your we keep stacking money or do we go for any some leadership for the upcoming wishes. siege? I think either is probably fine. I'm going to take the money. I am the and that will probably replace for us any units that we lost. Let's see if he joins the, the actual group or if he attacks us. We gained the Hunter, so our Ambulance success chance is going up by another 10%. Yeah, there's going to be a point in this campaign where we really go for ambushing. There we go. So our technology is done. Let's see. An extra 500 gold. We're sitting at 10k with nothing to spend it on. And they want us to destroy the following faction in 12 turns. We're about to do that. So that's another 500 for us. Thank you, Barry Drury. Hi, the rebates is done. All right. What do we go to next? Income from settlements seems pretty standard good. Local militia seems great. Um, we don't really have much to trade with. I see mass-produced small ammunition as a way to, to really get more value from the huntsmen that we're enable, inevitably going to have you know, a full group of. Research rate is something that's smart to get first. But what I really want is these Imperial Reinforcements. 
and we're gonna rush that. I don't know if I've seen anybody rush that in their campaigns. Like I said, I haven't watched too much of other people play this. Yeah, I know it's boring, guys, but the blue line is where it's at. Blue lines win campaigns. And we're gonna go for another... Yeah, let's go for another Iron Disciplinarian. The rumors say that this one is proper. And let's give him the Sword of Swift Slaying. And let's check out his tree. So he's got Assassinate. That could be useful for us later. Uh, training is great to start stacking. When I first started playing Total War, I would always go yellow. Yellow line. All I wanted to do was make my characters as powerful as possible. Now, as I play on harder difficulties more often, I really understand the value of... The blue line and training and getting our units up you know getting them tons of experience per turn is really valuable experience plunderer okay that's that's new and he doesn't have a mount so he is a paladin with no mount options super interesting and they are beat to heck but they can't replenish as long as we're sieging so, while we're here, I know it'll do it, like, manually since I've selected it, but I like to see what new, you know, places I discover on the turn that I can move it. So, like, for instance, if I were to discover a friendly race down here, I would want to know this turn, not next turn, if that makes sense. That way I could in initiate diplomacy with them as soon as possible. And after that victory, does anyone like me a little bit more? There's no way. It's not going to work, but you got to try. Unworkable. The sooner we get these types of agreements, the sooner we can snowball. Now. No backstabbing. You know what else is a pretty underutilized thing that I see in other people's campaigns? It's very useful when you're playing as the Empire or the Dwarves. And that's that sometimes you have an ally that likes you, Approach. right? And you just what say, hey man, just give me 300 no. bucks. And it didn't work this time, but if you've got, you know, 10 factions that really love you, Every like five or six or so turns, you can basically just ask them for 300 gold and they'll give it to you. And that's an awesome way to generate gold uh, for some of your harder campaigns. But anyway, so we've chosen a new technology. We've got our group ready to fight. We don't need siege towers, I don't believe. Not with this many archers. We could probably just walk right up to the walls, pull ladders out of our butts, and climb them. The war wagon's going to be a non-factor. They're so beat up. Skirmishers here are gonna suck on the walls. We'll kill the we'll kill the leader like right away. Yeah, guys, let's just let's just get into it. And it's nice because we got two fights out of this. So the two fights are gonna build towards our hostility meter and make it so that uh, we you know we're progressing our campaign a lot faster. And then once we get to that next tier of hostility, that's when the waystalker is gonna show up. So after this, maybe that will be you know where we're at. Not to mention, you know, we get a ton of experience for this. So, okay, this is a two-sided fight here. We don't want to fight in the water. Let's go ahead and, and shift our focus to here. So, guys, I mentioned in the last episode I hate cheesing the AI. That's not a thing that I like to do. Um, if I wanted to win every siege, I would just deploy my entire army here. Use my archers to clear the walls of anyone who could command the towers. And then I would walk up my strongest units right here, clear the walls... So on and so forth. Super boring. Not interesting to watch whatsoever. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that at all. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to send these guys up to clear the walls for us. As best they can. We are going to... You know what? Let's just overwhelm. That's... You know what? Their, their range is such a huge disparity. That you kind of, you can't really stack them together like most archers. Like I said, last time I was talking and I made a bunch of little rookie mistakes. Let me not do that again. We don't need skirmish mode. You can set it in the options to have it turned off by default. And any unit that doesn't fire in a 360, it probably should be turned off by default. So we will keep these guys here. Hopefully they don't take the brunt of any type of fire from the towers. And the halberdiers are going to be kept kind of in reserve. 
They are going to be our gate busting force. So if I was really worried about the number of units here and the, the quality of the defenders, I would split my army up in two and force the AI to defend both sections of the wall. Sometimes what I like to do, like, I don't need this to break down the wall or the garrison's uh, gate, by the way. This is our battering ram. Cool little eagle design in the front with all the empire shields. Um, by the time this gets here, we'll have the gate probably halfway down. Um, what you can do is send it over here, and the AI will waste a ton of units trying to stop it from getting to their gate. But like I said, I'm not going to gain the system. We're just gonna We're just going to do what we do. Not sure how useful Marcus will be in a siege if he can't fire over people's heads. And we'll just, I like to have hot groups for everybody. So let's go. First things first, let's get everyone going where they need to go. Let's put our archers in locked groups. That way we can very simply just tell them to scoot forward and shoot. And Marcus cannot. Oh man, did I make another rookie mistake? I sure did. But look what it did. I did not mean to do this, by the way. But this is cool. It's actually kind of the strategy I was talking about. We forced a lot of the AI to deploy here. And we're just going to use these elite guys to break down this bridge. I actually meant to put them here and use them to break down... Uh, bridge is not the right word. The gate. I actually meant to put them here to do the gate. So guys, talking and playing for me. Not yet my strongest suit. I 100% will get better. And archers should have the arc necessary to, to get kills and to clear these walls off for us. Let's see how everyone's kind of getting up the walls. We're going to take some casualties here. As long as the greatswords make it in, we should be fine. And then we'll pretty much insta-kill this guy. We should be able to take this no problem. I don't think they have anything that can stop that kind of armor and armor piercing. And for whatever reason, our guys have decided to just kind of stand here looking at the at the wall. It's a bug. Uh, sometimes they just take a second to do it, but sometimes they really will just stand there and not do anything. So you gotta you gotta stay on top of them. And they're clearing the walls. They want none of this. So these little uh, crenellations here, they really will stop you from hitting what you're trying to hit. So shoot at the units that are that are attack that are stacked up here, and you'll see they have their shields up, but they're facing the wrong direction. This tower is kind of blocking me a little bit, but we can hit them. These skinks are facing the wrong direction, and my swordsmen are now starting to get onto the wall. We'll just tell them to attack whatever. We own this tower now; it won't be shooting at us anymore. And these honestly aren't even really good fights for us. Uh, they still outnumber us. But if we, at least if we take these, we won't have all these towers shooting at us. Only this one probably for a while. But the towers are very weak. Let's get our wagons here. We can just park them right behind these spearmen. And hopefully they'll be able to shoot over people's heads. Let's see what the, uh, the gate health is here. So 63% and climbing. It should almost be destroyed. And once it goes down, the spearmen will rush in. There we go. And we'll do our best. I don't like I said, I don't know how Wolfheart's gonna do here. A single shot might be enough to kill this guy. He's down to eight HP. But you know what? I'm actually not even that eager to rush into here. He's broken but not shattered. That's crazy. The gate's a little tricky. I just want to post up right here with Marcus and get in there and shoot. You can see how many of them are actually running. Archers are doing great. And here we go. We made it in. And we'll push towards the center. And they'll be shooting at us the whole way. Just try and stabilize the walls. Don't get greedy. These spearmen are not like the best units in the game. Let's get Marcus over here so we can actually shoot. I was figuring they would defend this gate a little harder, but they really are not. 
Come on, guys. Let's get in. Seizures are really buggy in this game. You know what? Let's go. You want some? We'll give you some. And we'll push forward here with our paladin. And a single group of uh, halberdiers. And their rampage. The Sorcerer Rampage, that's great. Halberdiers are just such a value unit. We zoom into the fight so you guys can see some of the action. Man, CA, just give me an army painter. Ready for war. Why are you guys, what are you doing? Kill those Pure dudes. And I think our paladin, he's shielded, he's armored. Once he gets into these skirmishers, he should be fine. No, war wagons, what are you doing, guys? Pretty sure last I left them, they were here. Shoot your payload. Let's get Marcus into melee, see if he can melee slap that guy. And down go all the lords. So, now the best thing to do usually is to try and get your archers to line the walls. So that way you can shoot down onto the enemy. And you gotta consider, like, the arc at which the archers can fire. So we were kind of lucky we had a little bit of high ground here. It kind of aided our arc. And right now it seems more like we're just shooting ourselves. I'm sure we've lost a unit or two on the walls. Nothing major, though. Move our spearmen up. We're holding quite nicely there. And these guys are sort of chasing them off the battlefield. They're close enough to, to scare them. And the more units that run, the more balance of power shifts in our favor. Are you beasting it up, man? Six kills? Not bad, not bad. Keep going, Roderick. Don't let it be like last time you walked into Elizabeth City. And the great sword should just crush these these skinks. What are their what are their kills up to right now? 54, to be expected. They've also got a little bit of veterancy, that's nice. Have they gone up? They've gone up two veterancy levels from just this fight, I think. Actually, maybe a little bit from last fight as well. And that's going to be it. Victory. And we're going to finish our quest. We're going to take a new capital. I'll take it. No reason to stick around and kill them. I'm pretty sure you don't get experience on your your units from, uh, from killing routing units. Or at least after the battle's over routing units. But awesome. And I'm and like I said, I'm pretty sure we lost something. Well done, but in our last battle, we took the 500 gold. So, you know, either you regen, you take the gold. Obsidian Lodestone. Trying to remember what that is. That magic resistance it is. So even more magic resistance. Um, let's give the... Can we not do that? I guess we can't. Okay. We can do it in this screen. Good. We want to give this to Roderick for when we get a caster. And we'll drop magic spells on top of him. And he'll be like completely immune to it. It'll be good time. So let's just occupy. No, no need to loot. And we get the trait, Plan Buster. So achieve victory over the Lizardmen multiple times, and that gives us leadership for our entire army when fighting the Lizardmen. It says having a plan isn't always enough. Sometimes you need insight, sometimes foresight, but always martial strength. And of course, okay, thank you for the for the lodestone. That's pretty useful. Uh, our hostility has increased, so our public order has dropped another two. And Imperial supplies are dispatched at normal frequency instead of low frequency. And man, I would love to get... So we're going to get advanced receive, uh, Imperial supplies received at this point. But it would be awesome if we could get our technology research beforehand. So destroy the following faction. We did that. Faction destroyed, they have been obliterated. There is nothing left apart from the echoing laughter of thirsting gods. And Kalara joins the expedition. So, before we read this, let's go ahead and read her, her lore blurb. I am so stoked to have a Waystalker in our party. Like, the idea of having two incredibly strong archers, we're going to be able to snipe any lord we want. So, reach rank 5 is her current objective. He wanted us to occupy Flan Hopek. And he wants to just move to the Vampire Coast. Super easy. Alright, so let's read her lore blurb together. And we want to be on part one. So the ghost in the jungle. 
The colonists speak of something strange living in the nearby jungles. They say it is not of the lizards, nor of the rat men that infest this continent, but something else, a ghost they call it. Part of me thinks this god's forsaken place drives some men to hallucinations, but today, a hunting party returned with a curious tale. They had been tracking a wild bastilodon whose carcass would have provided much sustenance for the colonists and had trapped the great beast in a bog. They claimed that as they moved in for the kill, it was unexpectedly struck down by an arrow propelled through the thick jungle canopy directly into one of its eyes. Such frightening huntsmanship could only be supernatural. In this flora-covered terrain, it is almost impossible to hit a moving bastilodon's weak points from range as the men described. Furthermore, they claimed they were... They were then threatened by a mysterious hooded figure in the trees above them, a sorrowful voice of a woman telling them, Whosoever approaches my bounty will share its fate. Perhaps this is the ghost the colonists speak of. Whatever it is, to kill a bastilodon in such a way requires a level of precision, far exceeding that of any huntsman I've ever met. Makes sense. Waystalkers live for thousands of years. So if I remember right, her story, uh, the story of Kalara, is that she loved a vainglorious elf who tried to impress her by telling her secrets about the hunt, which is kind of a, a tradition of the wood elves. And in doing so, he was cursed and turned into a stag. And she searched for him. Her, she didn't know where her lover had went. She searched for him amongst the jungle, or the woods, I guess, of the wood elves. And she came across a stag and killed it. But when she went to go and recover her kill, she noticed that it had returned mysteriously into the form of her lover. So her story is very tragic, kind of Greek tragedy-esque. She ended up killing her own lover. And, uh, yeah, very sad. Not sure why she's in Lustria, perhaps. We'll find an answer to that. Now, instead of adding her to the party right now, I think what we should do is send her off to go ahead and fulfill the other requirement for our witch hunter so we can move his story along. So she has jungle spirit. Oh, man, she, she increases our campaign movement range. That is awesome. What are the other ones? I don't think I've adequately seen this so he has junglist double experience gained for units when fighting against lizard men that is awesome and he increases our leadership by five and then regal okay plus four public order they have these really good traits let's see if she has any unique skills okay the endless hunters making us fire super fast whenever we're fighting in forest and she gives us even more ambush defense. So with her and our party, we'll basically be immune. And we could double up on training. That's pretty cool. So she is, for most intents and purposes, kind of a, a typical waystalker. She doesn't have all of her abilities, I don't think. But we can make her super strong. I mean, we can give her a huge melee attack and defense. Make her just an absolutely monstrous archer. Prey of Anathrama. Another net, so we'll have two nets. We'll have hers plus, uh, when we finally get around to Marcus's, that'll be strong. And we'll have two units that are great at assassinating at some point, hopefully. Well, let's go ahead and move her. I think we only have to go here to get that distance. And now we have choices. We have a lot of interesting choices, actually, as to where we want to move on the campaign. Let's go ahead and level up Marcus first. And Fervent, you know, the Lizardmen don't really spread taint. It's really just the uh, the Skaven on this part of the world that we have to worry about. And I guess, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of undead to our east. Recruitment cost I don't really like to get simply because once I get a good army with him, I'm not going to be recruiting with him anymore. But let's just max out Iron Disciplinarian because I can already tell that public order is going to be a major uh, factor in this campaign. We almost need to make another army and sit them here just to stabilize. Uh, but we're going to let this tick up slowly over time. Uh, but we need to we need to be prepared for the eventual the eventual cascading failure that will result in multiple <laughs> multiple uh, armies spawning there and wanting to fight. So whew, we can now take a second. That one unit of swordsmen we lost, no big deal. We'll replace it with one of our hero units. And very soon, we're going to be getting Imperial 
Guardian here. We've still got, it looks like, 24 turns until we get our next bit of supplies. So we've got plenty of time to double up on our technology to get these Imperial reinforcements. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. And for now, we're going to relax. There's a weaving house here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the building browser. That's adding to our gold, but that's not really what we need. I don't really want to destroy it. Once we get this to tier 2, we'll probably destroy it and build basic walls. And then maybe some stables. Give ourselves access to pistoliers. Something like that. Or even a tap room. And the basic walls and just really stabilize ourselves. Make sure our public order is nice and high. We're several turns away from getting to level 3 and having that coastal town. That will give us one extra public order. Yeah, that will allow us to do a few different things. Our growth is going to shoot through the roof once we finally get that, uh, that pasture building. Hopefully by then it's not too late. So, what else do we have to do? I think that's everything. So we've destroyed that faction. So now guys, here are our options. Uh, we go east, and we pick fights with these Lizardmen and the Vampires. These Lizardmen don't hate us quite yet. Uh, these Orcs actually kind of like us because we're killing Lizardmen. But eventually they're going to be a problem. The question is... Is this where I want my empire to be? Or is this where I want my empire to be? At the beginning. And the Savage Orcs are probably easy pickings for us. They have a lot of physical resistance, but they're very weak versus archers. And I think we can beat them. It'll take me about two more turns before we really have to decide. So let's just, let's just chill. Let's end the turn. And let's see if that timer goes down this turn for... Uh, our next batch of reinforcements. Because I'm not so sure it's locked in at 24. Maybe since we reached that next tier, it sped up a little bit. Maybe it did it already and I missed it. Nope, still stuck at 23. Okay, so it'll be quite some time before we get our next batch. Alright, so our next thing is to recruit a lord. No one man can stand against so many, Hunts Marshal. Recruit more commanders to lead our armies against these threats. Alright, I can do that. So, we have options here. Grazing pastures is important for us to quickly level. Uh, but we are very exposed on this flank. And I kind of just want to quickly lock down this area with a guardhouse. I'm worried they have a big army right here. Damn, we're, we're one turn away from, from landing that. Marcus Wolfhart. Let's move to the border here. Fearless. For encampment stance, we need 50%. So you know what? We are going to keep replenishing here. Keep you know driving that public order into a, a super positive. We might end up taking about two turns off, I think is where we're going to be at. Yeah, that's fine. Two turns off. One turn to replenish, and then we'll move about 50% of our movement and then camp. Onwards. We've taken the gold, so our replenishment's a little bit weak. I really want that engineer, and then I really want Hurtwick to get back over here so we can start using him in combat. The stack is going to be really powerful once we're able to do that. Let's see what our quests are. So we need to control two provinces. We're working on that. That'll be if we if we take these two places. Raise our hostility level to very hostile. We are on very hostile. Maybe that'll trigger this turn. Coastal town. That's basically just up us upgrading that to tier three, and then recruit a lord, which we will do maybe next turn. It'll take a huge chunk of our, out of our income, and yeah, we're kind of rich right now. Um, that is to say, I mean, we have a pretty nice bank, but once we, we haven't built anything, once we, once we build a few things, that will no longer be the case. So, I mean, we upgrade this, that's 3,200, we upgrade this, that's 3,200, 
you know, we buy another building here, we buy another building here, probably a garrison, to be honest. Uh, really make this place safe. And, yeah, I mean, this will this will drop quickly. Anything else to do? Let's check on our, our little rat buddies. We can trade with them at this point. That's interesting. That'll make it harder to break any agreements with them in the future. But I really think they're going to die. Let's see if they'll pay us for this trade. They won't. Okay, rejected. You don't have to honor treaties with dead men. <laughs> or dead rats in this case, but... The war declared. Exoadl's fighting on lots of different fronts right now. They haven't been able to exterminate the Norsemen presence. They've also still got the human faction alive, and they have rats they're fighting now, and probably also Dark Elves. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, nice. The Vampire Coast. So these two guys are fighting each other. Perfect. So with that going on, I think we're safe to focus on our western front. And a stranger comes. A cloaked stranger from the mist-shrouded lands of Albion. That's where Nakai's supposed to be. Approaches with a request. He is of sinister aspect, but assures you that his intentions are good. So in Albion, if you read the lore, I'm pretty sure there's like this whole cast of like dark cultists that worship chaos gods there. They're like this ancient group. Um, we can take chaos corruption. This is basically 20 chaos corruption. That is no big deal. Um, we're, we're not being encroached upon by any other types of corruption that I'm aware of. Uh, we also don't need the untainted. So let's just take the 3k. I'm a big believer in taking the gold. So let's cross this line. And Van Hall finds a lead. Alright, we gained the trait on him. We get focused. So he gets better at hero success chance and action success chance. It's all good stuff. And let's move her down. We really want her to rejoin our our party here. Let's move about 50%. You see in the bottom left, I'm kind of like fan-angling it. Every last beast. And we might just walk over this place. They have a huge garrison. What the hell? 14 units in this garrison? Okay. Let's encamp. Get that replenishment rate back up. And let's see. We're going to read this real quick. I wanted to get our dwarf today and add him to the group. All right, guys, let's go ahead and read the uh, the lore blurb for Chapter 2, Air Doctor. All right, so raid any region. Oh, that's super easy. For 300 exper 3,000 experience for him. So Hertwig von Hall is an intriguing individual. He bears the surname of a well-known ancient lineage of witch hunters, basically Van Helsing for the, uh, the Warhammer world. But for reasons unknown to me, he seems rather ashamed of it. When I brought it up, he responded angrily, claiming his vocation as a witch hunter was not of his choosing. He then quickly changed the subject, revealing that he was a master physician of Outdorf and insisted I address him as Air Doctor. It truly beguiles me why a physician from Outdorf is carrying out witch hunter duties in Lustria, but I am not one to poke about in another man's private affairs. There is certainly much more to Air Doctor, which perhaps in time he will reveal on his own volition. But right now, he has temporarily left camp. Before leaving, he told me he intends to track down some information about one particular vampire he has been searching for, called Alistair the Red. He has given me assurances that I cannot help him with this particular task, and that he will return soon. Okay, so, events, let's read what it says. Herdwig returns to you in good spirits and renewed focus, explaining that he now has a solid lead in his search. The vampire he seeks is one of the famous Pirate King's closest henchmen, who actively haunts the waters of the Vampire Coast to raise more potential recruits into his master's zombie crews. To find him, some raiding may be necessary. So, at this point, they're fighting each other. These lizardmen, and uh, we actually probably can make a treaty with these guys if we wanted to really shore up our borders. I hope you're prepared Most, yeah, they want a peace treaty. They're probably getting smashed. Let's see how much they'll pay us. Okay, not a lot, actually. Not the Stein. Damn, normally they're willing to pay a ton. Maybe we should wait another turn. Let them get destroyed a bit more. Because in all honesty, they'll probably get crushed. But we want to raid them before they get destroyed. 
because this is our easiest source of finishing our quest. Where the nearest vampires are, probably down here. If these guys do indeed get destroyed. Okay, anything else? I think we're good. Don't want to forget to move anyone. Don't want to forget to build anything. Alright, good to go. And next turn, we'll get our engineer. Very excited to see what his whole deal is. Alright, I don't like this. Hopefully they're not trying to assassinate my heroes. If that becomes a problem, we'll have to put some points in assassinate. That way we can preemptively kill them before they kill us. Okay, let's uh let's go for Blade Master. Give him a bit more melee attack. We are the best. Wow, she still can't reach. My arrow flies through. And we are gonna walk to I think as long as we stay in our own territory, we're fine. Let's walk to about here. Let's go. And I would think that we would be able to, to get to these these orcs next turn. If we add her to the group though, it'll it'll mess up our movement range. Captain of Scout. So let's just ambush and see who comes out of the woodwork. Show me the accused. Alright, I don't know exactly where the Step line is, it. how far we have to go. March on the witches. For Sigma. That should trigger it though. And there we go. Alright. So Yorick has joined the expedition. Mandate progressed, and we made it up to Imperial Guardian, so awesome. Good benefits for us. Let's read what it says. The expedition has increased its level of acclaim, making great strides towards fulfilling the Emperor's mandate. You will now receive better quality Imperial supplies. Continue guarding acclaim to advance the expedition's progress and further the Imperial cause. So now we definitely want to move him back. Uh, we could try and make allies down here. Teclas is here. Um, Kalita's down here. That might not be a bad idea. Could potentially be trade partners for us, but I really want to get him back here as soon as possible. And before we... Was this completed? Alright, so now we have a decent garrison to defend ourselves against any vampire counts that might try and come. And man, we're, we're getting a little long in the episode, but before we leave for today... Actually, you know what? Let's save this for tomorrow's episode. We'll read the dwarfs whole bio and his backstory and let's add him here let's check on him first so he has clever so he increases our research rate by 10 percent that would stack nicely with that other research so we'd have 20 percent faster research for ourselves i like that a lot and his name is yorick grim good name anything very interesting before we go so income from trade, 15%. Wow. Not to mention, you know, you produce additional trade resources, so you make even more money. We're going to want to get that as soon as possible, even if we have, like, no trade partners. And he also, as an engineer, he has trade, he has increased mobility, which increases our movement range by 15%. We're going to be able to go pretty far once we level this guy up. You add this to the Waystalker plus Marcus's own bonuses. And any technological bonuses we'll get at some point. I didn't see... Is there actually... Movement range somewhere around here? I don't see it. Normally there is a movement range... Buff, but I guess I, guess I don't see it. Man, I want that public order bonus. Seven grand? We could do this right now. You know what? Let's let's hold off on that. Guys, that's going to be it for me today. It's been fun. We had a great siege. We've unlocked all the heroes. And now we're going to start picking a fight with these savage orcs. And maybe close in on Mazda Mundi. How awesome would it be if we could take Hexoaddle? They're not doing so hot. I wouldn't be surprised if we get there and they are just beleaguered completely. And we can just stroll right in. But if we're going to do that, we need to make sure that this province, which will probably be like our biggest buffer province, uh, that they are super secure. And we're going to need another army to do that. Uh, and But for the for you know the foreseeable future, though, let's just keep stacking money. 
you know when the time comes we'll just recruit a lord and just drop units in them uh and have a great secondary force that we can use uh but that's it for me today guys once again my name is brett my channel is good talk gaming i hope you enjoyed today's video it's been super fun can't wait to bring you guys in for the next one if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you want to subscribe please feel free to do so that would be awesome and uh yeah guys i'll see you in the next one y'all take care